Hello and welcome back to Deadfire. So, we have another new companion. We have Maya. So, what are we going to do now? Well, we on the way here we got kind of waylaid by some piratey sorts. And I told the piratey sorts I would not interfere with their plans. Of course this is a lie. I am of course going to interfere with their plans very much so. And they have followed us here. So, uh, mm -hmm. Where is the guy we're meeting uh, around? He's at the Peddler's Canal. Okay, let's head out to Queen's Birth, to the Peddler's Canal, and we'll go and see him. Oh, what I should do as well is just check that our new companion is well equipped. They tend to be well equipped, but we'll just double check. So she has the Arquebus and the Sword. Nothing special about them. And apart, the only special thing she has is her armor. Plus one armor rating. And it lowers the reload time. That's nice. Um, so, let's have a look. The uh, stiletto would be fine. I don't think she has a sword specialization. So that seems like a fine replacement there. Uh, what else have we got? Armor, don't need it. Other stuff, we can give her Gon's Pledge. Which seems fine. I mean, it's not very good, but we'll give her Gon's Pledge. There we go, stick it on as a ring. Although actually, like, we could wear it. There we go, we'll have the bad ring. What else have we got? Give her the Animancer's hat. Why would we ever do that? We give her a Rawatai hat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that that's good. I like that. A cloak. Uh, cape and, yeah, okay. That's looking good. Yeah, I'll do. No, I'll do. That's just my eyes. Hey there. Leave right. it to me. Head this way. And, oh wait, another thing. You don't have a cape. You don't have a cape. A loth, you need a cape. Yeah. Purple's alright, it's not quite right, but it'll do. Nice to see you right there. Right, um, so where's Peddler's Canal? Oh, it's along there. Okay. So, he must be, like, just here. Oh, there's a Veta. Oh yeah, of course, we're just going to rat on them the the, more, the first moment we can. Alright, let's assume, if hmm? people are coming to attack us... Sure. Uh, I don't know if they are. You have my attention. Next time, a challenge. Oh wait, I need to set up my party composition. I already did, yeah. You have uh, my attention. If I want to do that, then I want it to be like this in terms of our setup. That probably here. Yeah, perfect. Let's speak to a veta. Where is my seal? Postinago, did you take it again? He grabs Degnos by the arm and shakes him. He winces and ducks his head, making no move to escape her grip. You will feel the bite of the cat's tail if you have lost it, boy. Um... Ooh, which one are we going to go for? Let's go for... Excuse me. Is this Nazanali a friend of yours, Degnos? Nazanali, that's a new one. A valian term for nosy person. She glances at you briefly, then looks away with a slight roll of her eyes. She returns her attention to Degnos, with her arms crossed, frowning. An acquaintance only, Casita, from the luminous bathhouse. He carefully avoids your eyes and shrugs half-consciously. First you waste my servant's time, and now you have the gall to waste mine as well. She stares at you, hawk-eyed, down her long nose and raises a brow, lightly expecting you to quaver before her. Well, let's find some rather strange items in your servant satchel. It is impolite to go through other's things. Your manners are atrocious. Were you raised in a barn? Just look in the bag, lady. And that is not a... Casita, please do not. He reaches for the satchel in your hands, but is not bold enough to take it from you. Deveris! Degnos, you will explain this. Deveris? Another new one. Failing expression of questioning or confirmation, roughly translating to really or seriously? Aveta snatches the satchel from your hands and rifles through it. She pulls her seal from the satchel with a flourish and shoves it in Degnos's face. And what is this, eh? When he begins to laugh nervously, she digs again into the satchel, this time removing the letter. Quoi? She opens the letter and begins to read. With a strangled cry, Degnos stumbles back and takes off, running full pelt down the docks. Uh... Come back here. I don't think I'm gonna catch him. I'm gonna get I up. got this. 
Okay. Well, let's speak to Aveta. Yeah. It is a pity you let him escape. She rubs her temple, eyes closed, and does not speak for a long moment. She exhales in a gust. He will be found. I will make it so. She makes expansive chopping gestures as she speaks, emphasizing her point. I did not think he had the stones. And now I will never know the extent of his sabotage. Trade routes, partners, cargo. Anyone may know them now, Merla! She runs a hand through her hair and grimaces. But you have saved my life. Agrasima, for your trouble. She digs around in her hip pouch and produces a handful of coins. Your intervention has given me much work to do. Leave me to my tasks. Corez! Corez. Literally a contraction of go with the gods. She shoes you away with a flapping hand. Well, we're not done yet, are we? Because the quest did not end. Did, she he did he end up this way? Hmm. Woe to those this. who labor in the shadow. For nothing is hidden from Aethys's divine sight. Have we spoken to her before? Madiko, where is that spoiled brat? A woman in fine clothes clutches a ledger in both hands. She searches the faces of passers-by, settling on yours with an uncertain frown. What seems to be the problem? Laro is past due for a company meeting. Mother wants me to drag the elusive louse back by his ear. She tucks the book under her arm. You'd think this district was a maze, the way he manages to hide. He glances over your shoulder and sighs and looks back at you for sudden recognition. I trust the whispers of Queen's birth, so I trust you. If you desire to get in the graces of the Valian Trading Company, we can help each other. How can I help? Could I persuade you to watch out for Laro? I'd pay generously for your trouble. I'm going to study her hands? Nera's been digging her nails into her ledger, leaving crescent moon-shaped impressions in the binding. She notices your interest and holds the book protectively close. I... I'm concerned, because Laro tends to feud with Orso, one of the local Valera rats. What do you mean by Valera rat? <laughs> the Valeras. A brood of sea vermin playing at nobility. You have her ledger as if to bring it down on a pest. We squabble and compete, but Laro, the Pastinago, takes it too far. If I happen across Laro, I'll let you know. Would you? I'll be waiting at the estate in case he happens to return. Nira thumbs over her shoulder. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern, the falls above the Adra Mill, and the southwestern bridge. If you see him, tell Laro to get his good for nothing ass back home. Well, we do have this thing with chasing a rogue god to the ends of Aeora, but I guess if it's on the way. <laughs> I like how Eddie likes to remind us of our overall plot. Sure. Or th of the overall plot. Okay. Well, I w still wasn't where we were going. I was still looking for the other guy, but I guess if we can't find him... Where's the, where's the way out? Oh, it's up here. Let's head this way. Is that a way out? No, it's over here. It's the locust's way out. Okay, well. Just to go to the north ex exit. Thank you very much. Can't see the guy we were looking for. So, let's uh, head back to the queen. And presumably the guys will meet us on the way there. A little quick save before we hit the uh, north exit. Serpent's Crown. I would like to go to the palace. Encounter. No encounter. Interesting. I was certain we were going to get an encounter with them. But I guess not. Okay. Consider it done. Water dances in graceful circles around this coral uh, sculpture. You see my adorable fish, Captain. I leave you to guess which of them is real. Oh, okay. Oh, so these are his fish. He made that sculpture. Interesting. Well, now we're back in here. Uh, I'm going to speak with the prince, because I guess uh, the queen has gone away for just now. What have we got here? Uh, right. What mechanisms control this door is unclear. The plate does not budge under your fingers. Right here. Okay. Hello. Your coming is a favorable omen already. The prince nods and crosses his arms, a half-satisfied uh, smile on his lips. How's that? You happen by a time when our rivals bicker and tear at each other's throats. 
bringing Gatis Chosen on your trek up the mountain. He nods to Takehu with approval. <laughs> it does not take a priest to see how the gods send us an outsider to dig under the skin of our enemies. Aruhi chuckles to himself and nods. I am honored to meet you. Save your manners for my sister. Kohopa fashioned me for the arena, not the court. I will not paddle around the island. My sister wants to know if you are as useful as you are disruptive. She trusts me to judge this. You did not come this far to serve the crown, I say. But sailing is an expensive hobby. Loyal service can keep your galley stocked. Have you had any problems with loyalty lately? Nekataka is a city of friends, I say. We exchange so much between districts. His smile tightens into a hard line. Even my sister's advisors dine at the officer's lounge and indulge at the wild mare. Aruhi grimaces and looks away. I take it you prefer your friends close? Here in Serpent's Crown, I can guarantee safety. But cavorting with outsiders, Akira, that is open water. He opens his palms and sighs. Takehu, I must remind you to be vigilant, <laughs> even though you will ignore my advice. Aruhi raises his brow and smirks. My prince, wild mares could not keep me from the wild mare, but I will remember your words. A helpful warning, Harold of Bereth, from one friend to another. Well, may I speak with the queen? I am Onikaza's shield. For a time, let it suffice that we speak with the same authority. I could use some extra coin to outfit the Defiant. Ikera, to patch a hull or stitch a sail is costly when supplies come from distant islands. The city has honest work for those in need, I say, and insists that everyone carry a heavy purse. I had some questions. After the sorry display we have put on, you have every right to be curious. Have on, then. The prince nods. I'm still not sure what the argument was about. The trading companies beat their chests and howl at each other. Business and conquest speak louder than hospitality. Aruhi rolls his eyes. If I was the Hazanui, I would think twice before barking that a tribe as wealthy and ruthless as the Valians destroyed my lighthouse. All right. How does the caste system work in Nekataka? It is the same in the city as anywhere in the Deadfire. Mataru judge our souls at birth and organize us for the survival of the tribe. Aruhi pauses and frowns to himself. I am not the first to say it, but Nekataka has more walls than beaches, more roads than clearings, and more people than fish. Nowhere in the city does a Raparu sit around the same fire as a Mataru. Nekataka tests our traditions, I say. Don't you see that as a contradiction? What man or woman of the Isles does not? Aruhi <laughs> chuckles and shakes his head. Our ancestors built this place. We are the hermit crab who occupies a fallen shell. It is for my sister and her priest to judge the fit. Aruhi shrugs, squinting up at the court's high ceiling. You and Onikaza represent the Kahanga tribe. Akira, as the largest and most prosperous of the Deadfire tribes, the Kahanga have... Some authority to speak for the others. I say Onikaza and I are large stones in a tide pool, standing tall as the water rises to our necks. You don't seem to think much of the trading companies. My sister has mastered the diplomat's tongue, and I am foolish to give her frustrations a loud voice. He sheepishly scratches the back of his ha uh, head. But Ikera... I pray every day that Ngati tests the outsiders against her tallest waves and longest serpents. The ocean is a few monsters short since the Armada showed up. I think we passed your fish god's trial. I... quite so, Maya. Prince Aruhi turns away, blushing. What do you think of your sister's rule? We agree on much, I say. The prosperity of the Juana, our burden to appease the gods. Aruhi clears his throat and cranes his neck to tell if anyone is eavesdropping. In the trading companies, Onikaza sees Wodeka testing us, weighing who deserves the isles. I see Ngate sending krakens of gold and iron against our ship, but arming us with a single harpoon. The gods will judge us by our persistence. 
and our grace before foes. Aruhi inclines his head to Maya. She frowns and glances over her shoulder. No further questions. While you are in Nekataka, maybe you are interested in making yourself useful. The prince eyes you with a curious gleam. Enjoy your stay in Nekataka. A little crestfallen, the prince manages a cordial smile and a nod. Wait. I see you pulled in Gatis Chosen from the Guild Hall. Yes. Ikira, but have you pried any secrets from the gullet yet? Aruhi raises his brow and motions for you to go on. Maya, I hope you do not judge our fair city too harshly. What? Look, keep your business where it belongs. With the captain. Maya furrows her brow and edges closer to you. We have more things we can say to him? It seemed like that, that was meant to be a choice on the previous one, but it wasn't. Um, We could tell him that the Principe are smuggling cargo via the Undercroft. I don't think I'm going to do that. I had other questions. Or I can say I'll report in later. Ooh. I don't know. Do we want to tell him? We can't just tell everybody everything, so the Prince Pierre smuggling cargo via the Undercroft. Undercroft. A darker, more fetid layer of Nekataka, I say. He cradles his chin in his palm, looking off into the distance. Only Kaza and I are the mind and heart of the city, but the bowels. These we cannot reach. What say? Did Ngati's Chosen learn anything from the voyage below? Aruhi gestures to Takahu. My prince, I have always known those who pray for Ngati's favor, but only now do I see those who depend on it. Ikira, I say that a feather of Amira's wisdom drifted down to find you. Aruhi nods with approval. At least Delva's row is a stable target. The crown has time to decide the next steps. What do you plan on doing about Delver's rule? I learned in the arena never to underestimate an advantage. For now, it is enough that I know where they bring in goods. Water shapers were helping the pirates bring in chips. To Kehu, I say that no one wanted to hear your suspicions confirmed. Akara, me least of all, my prince. When it comes to the dignity of the guild, the crown can compromise nothing. Onikaza will see their leadership disciplined, I say. They must have needed the money. Can you imagine why? Ikira, I cannot. Aruhu, Aruhi pinches his lower lip and sighs. Onikaza and I both expect more from the guild, I say. She will not be pleased. Aruhi shakes his head and sighs. Ikira, but at least you return to me in one piece. You are not the first agent I sent to the gullet. But you are the first to return. Aruhi grins in spite of himself and claps you on the shoulder. We finished the quest, apparently. Alright, somebody could have told me we were on one, but okay. I say I would feel safe anywhere with... With Rawatai's sharpest weapon in my arsenal. He inclines his head to Maya. If you're trying to flatter me, stop taking notes from my brother the poet. Maya folds her arms and grimaces at Arauhi. I cannot say that I desire to send you to worse places than the gullet, but... Arauhi tails off and scratches the back of his head. Go on. Does the name Ukaizo mean anything to you? The prince's face is impassive, but it seems to be studying yours with close attention to detail. A lost city, if local fables are to be believed. Fable? No. History, I say. Ukaizo was the home of the Hwana before cataclysm and destruction wiped the island from the dead fire. That is the story. Story or no, I make no secret that we search for Ukaizo. He studies you, allowing his words to sink in. I do not share this lightly, I say. He glances at Maya, his attention lingering. Please, speak on. If it looks like I'm taking notes, it's because I am. She winks down at Ishiza. Should I leave this in the hands of someone I trust instead? Aruhi turns to you with a look of warning. Maya is not my vassal. She will do as she chooses. All the same, I'm not above a good faith gesture. Maya folds her papers and tucks them away. The prince nods. Our tribes are spread across many isles, but it is Ukaizo which binds us. Ukaizo and the knowledge that we must return. To that end, a local cartographer secured a lead. 
a breadcrumb to a breadcrumb, I say. I sent an expedition to Matari Okozi, one of the sanctuary isles. They were to retrieve evidence of our lost homeland. They have yet to return. Sanctuary isles? They were sites where our ancestors grouped in terms of crisis. Constants in changing seas. You have the cartographer Atepo to thank. He wanders the western shrine if you would know more. The prince makes a dismissive wave towards the door. What makes you think that Motar Okozi contains evidence of Okaizo? The sanctuary isles give comfort and guidance to sailors on the long journey home. I am hoping the island can remember its purpose and return us to the home we lost. Did I expect any resistance? The trading companies would not have thought to look for Matari Okozi, but now they are vultures to carry in. I do not doubt that our rivals race for the same thing, all while we fall behind. How has the island remained hidden all this time? A question for those with years to gather reeds and scribe their thoughts. Aruhi smooths back his hair and sighs. It might be that someone or something on the island does not wish to be found. In better times than these, I would have been happy to oblige. No further questions. Ikira, then you are ready to depart? Um, there won't be a stone unturned on Motar Okaizo, Okozo, Okozi, when I'm done with it. To Kehu, I trust you are going. I want the tribes to know that Ngati's Chosen stood among those who threw open the gates of Okaizo. He turns a hopeful glass to Takehu. I make no promises of dirtying my hands in some fetid jungle, but I do not protest a calm voyage. Before you go. Aruhi lowers his tone and glances to his left and right. That did seem like too nice a way to end it. The expedition. I have reason to believe they will not be returning to Nekataka. Go on. We found this at the palace doorstep, cut from the robe of the expedition leader. Reaches into his pocket and draws forth a wad of red-stained bark cloth. One mystery heaped on another, I say. He drags his thumb over the cloth and frowns to himself. Let me see that, I might be able to learn something from it. Nodding, he relinquishes the scrap. A fragment of essence clings to the fabric like a thread woven too tightly to be unraveled. Trees tower above you and ropey vines stretch like tentacles across a marshy ruin. It takes all your strength to trudge through the hip-deep water. You glance over your shoulder, but the women and men of your company aren't there. Then a shape moves off in the distance. You draw your weapon, feeling now more alone than ever. The vision departs, leaving you with a deep hit in your stomach and a phantom sensation as nothing that nothing has gone as it should have. The prince regards you expectantly. Hmm. Nature is restless on this island. I can guess nothing more. I suspected this, as you say. Take care if you alight on Matari Okozi. My fear is that the island is sanctuary no more. Sighing, Prince Aruhi um, folds the cloth with reverence. Prepare yourself for a hard voyage northeast of Nekataka. Matari Okozi is nestled in the core of Rokuhu Islands, in the midst of a landmass that resembles a storm, like the fall of Ukaizo locked in time. Aruhi bites his thumbnail and turns away, lost in thought. Don't mind me as I take down those coordinates. Certain death it is, then. Alright. Anything more? Do not leave me in suspense, I say. Have you found Matari Okozi? No, I had other questions. If you have questions, the royal brother will hear you. Oh, okay. We should talk about the food shortage in the gullet. Shortage? Are the Raparu not fed the leavings of the Quaru and Mataru? They need more, my prince. Sighing Prince Aruhi uh, presses his palms together and nods. It is no wonder how Delver's Row won the love of my people, I say, by feeding them when we could not. Find us solutions instead of old problems, I say. The Raparu need their queen, won't she step in? Ikira! For what would she sit on her hands if she had the time? Or the resources? Aruhi pierces you with an annoyed look. The tribes beyond our city look to her as well, and the problems are as numerous as fish in the sea. Again, you bring this up. Speak on, I say. We're not going to threaten them. We could, cha we could go for it, be a shame if the trading companies recognize this failure of leadership. 
No, I see we are going to say that. It would be a shame if the trading companies recognized this failure of leadership. Ikira, if one framed it that way. The prince squeezes his hands into fists. I will dredge up the resources to feed the Raparu if the meat must come from my own body. The work of keeping pace with our rivals. There is no end, I say. Aruhi sighs and shakes his head. If you have more to say, I am not above listening. He nods, sweeping his hands out. Um, I have questions about you and Huana. Ikera, both topics I know well. I want to know more about Okaizu. My sister would say that Ukaizo is the birth canal of the tribes, and we are destined to return and discover ourselves again. Ask Onikaza if you would know more. She is the family historian. I am the family arsenal. All right, farewell. Well, I would ask her, but you've said I, she won't speak to me, yeah, so... I got this. I guess I won't ask her. Maybe we can go and find her manually, like through here. Okay. So, we've got food for the gullet, and we solved the problem at the start. Okay. Who is Granis Igir, or Igyar? Okay. You meet a tall, brown-haired man dressed in full plate mail. That might not normally catch your eye, but his mail is unusually coloured in a deep green and emblazoned with the image of a golden tree. Hand on pommel of his sword, he watches the crowd go by with keen eyes, relaxed yet fully alert. He narrows his eyes when he spots you. What do you need of me? He looks at you warily, as if he's deciding whether you are the snake that might bite. Well? Tell me about yourself. He's initially hesitant, unsure of your intent. Eyes narrowed, he sizes you up, then nods. Interesting armor you have there. I suppose it is. Are you familiar with the shield bearers of Saint Elka? We are a paladin order. No. The order began as guards for Elka, a noblewoman emissary of Kulkin, who bartered for peace with the kingdom of Vadir. The order's founders were forbidden to bring weapons to the meeting, and she was attacked. With only their shields to aid them, they fought off her attackers and brought her to safety. She later died of her wounds and the shield-bearers of St. Elka were born in her memory. He clears his throat dramatically. I am the son of a disgraced noble family. My father and brothers were executed for treason when I was a boy. Rightfully so, I must add. And my mother, sister, and I were thrown out on the street. All we had to our names was a trunk full of heirlooms. One of them was this suit of armor, which belonged to my eldest brother. Now I endeavor to live up to its promise and redeem my family's honor. That's the long and short of it, really. Can you teach me what you've learned as a member of the Shield Bearers? Well, you would need to become a Shield Bearer yourself to really learn it all. But I suppose I can teach you a thing or two as we stand here. The privilege will run you 3,000 copper, however. No. As you like. Okay, so that's athletics and... Greetings. Oh, well, well, you would uh, need to become a Shield survival. Bearer as you like. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Athletics and survival 3,000 wins QP yeah I'm, there's no way I remember that but okay that's fine we have 5,000 nice now we're actually pretty rich but okay uh, Makara the buoyant beloved of Ngati po, uh, Ponamu bird scorned greatest of explorers Himunga Makapu, defender of his people. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sure. Head over this side, see what we got going on over here, and then we'll head upstairs. Right. Uh, who was that? Palace servants. Their raucous screeching of the birds in their cages is endless. Okay. Uh, the Huana depiction of Helia is almost menacing in its intensity. A tepu. The sun-scarred Huana glances up from the rumpled sheet of parchment in his hands and regards you with unease. A tepu, drawer of maps. I have nothing to sell unless you are needing something else. He clears his throat and rolls up the parchment with a quick spin of his palms. You're the cartographer who discovered Moter O Cozy, correct? What I discovered remains to be seen. A cautious smile spreads across his lips. The sanctuary isles were thought to be lost beneath the waves. If I stumbled upon one, I can think of worse finds to credit my name. If I was venturing to this island, what might I find? Death. Atepu stares away, his face losing its color until he catches your expression. 
I, I did not mean to frighten you. These islands have known great tragedy, and millennia have passed in cheerless silence. Should you land on a sanctuary isle, do not expect to find welcome. How did you make this discovery? I was surveying the waters around an atoll when a storm dragged my ship off course. The waters were unknown to me. When a green fleck appeared in my spyglass, I unfurled my sail. The shore twisted around itself, confusing even this old navigator until I found myself at the center. I did not make it far up the beach before I spotted signs of habitation. Marking my coordinates and orienting myself by the evening sky, I made for Nekitaka to tell the crown of my findings. Tell me about the Sanctuary Isles. Our ancestors marked off specific islands across Deadfire as rallying points in case a great misfortune split up the tribes. Even they could not have guessed how important the isles would become. Some thousands of years ago, volcanoes, storms, and quakes shook the archipelago. Any one of those do happen, but never with such ferocity or all at once. The Juana survived by taking shelter on the Sanctuary Isles to save our society and not just any one tribe. Since those days, we have not found any of the old Sanctuary Isles. Ngati took some beneath the waves, taking whole tribes with her. Others were lost to time and forgetfulness. I am told that the Wahaki are protective toward the Isles, but that is their business. Atepu shrugs. You mentioned entire tribes were lost? Understand. The dead fire was broken. The lives lost could not be counted. And more has been forgotten than may ever be remembered. Imagine how much history we lost in a single year. Much less the millennia that followed. Whatever our people hoped for themselves, we may never know if we got it right or wrong. Back to my other questions. Ah, uh, if we must. You must have seen much in your travels. Ever found a sign of Okazo? Just hearing the word causes him to perk up at attention, though his lips press together at a slant. There is not a Juana in all of the dead fire who does not take to the open water hoping to catch a glimpse of the lost Ukaizo. He sighs. Oh, if I could walk the beaches of our ancestors, take a fleeting glimpse of what they left behind, mine would be a life well lived. What would you hope to find on Ukaizo? The same thing we all hope for. Answers to the long silence that precedes our history. Who we were could tell us who we are. But if I am being selfish, maps, charts. Our ancestors were keen explorers, and a roll of their parchment could teach us more than what we have gathered in the last century. All right, farewell. I was good running into him. We got back here. We have. Though simple in construction, the sink is clean and tidy. Someone has finished off a quick meal in here. Okay. We got a book, The Rise of the Cipher Ranga, right which we've already read. Head up here. To the upper floor, which is where I assume the Queen is hanging out. I would guess, anyway. It seemed like she wanted to speak to us more, but maybe I'm wrong. That must be her room. Water shapers in it, and well, maybe this is just a general room. <laughs> you songwriters need a guild if you hope to learn discipline. Not so. We speak in the tongue of Ngati and Amira. Your pretty dances may upset the puddle, but we command the wind and sky. Hey, I have missed our little talks. <laughs> Ikara. Uh, okay, so let's speak to Barati. He smells one touched by the great eel, does Barati. A sizable Amoa tilts his head up and looks down at his nose at you, blowing his nostrils with hungry intensity. Interest. You are a man who sits across a fire with death, Akira. The pallid knight and I are on familiar terms. He nods, clasping his hands with quiet delight. For glutting mighty Tangaloa and hurling foes into their next life. Barati can offer payment. Coins for feeding hungry gods. Akira? You collect bounties? Rewarding those who appease the great eel. This is Barati's cause. May the beasts of the Dreaming Lands never know famine. Barati 
inclines his head and touches his brow, holding the pose with deep reverence. People must have really liked the bounties in the DLC, because... What is this, the sixth bounty hunter we found? Oh well, what bounties do you have available? Tangaloa rolls a hungry eye toward Dichila, a Valian captain who scouts for Luminous Ardra in sacred lands. Bratty squeezes his knuckles until they're bone white. I'll take the bounty. Akira. Tangaloa knew it would be so. Dechila sails her voyager Elysio around the waters south of Nikitaka. The great eel hungers for her soul. Alright, farewell. Hey there. Be it's right another there. bounty hunter. Alright. That's the way down. We go over here. Have a look. Yeah, Give me shut, a real shut the door behind us. Right, so. We'll open that, obviously. There. What did I tell you? We got a book that we could steal. No, not books. Scrolls. Not interested. Nope. Can't steal any hey more of that, so let's head out. I guess I need to open the door before I can head sure. out. Yeah. Uh, Round this way. So there's the Serpent's Crown. So that's the way out. Or a way out. To the Alright, yes. Watch Here. and learn. We got more stuff we can't have. Um... Uh, whatever creature these jaws belong to is clearly massive. Well, Aruri's collection is impressive. Uh, few of the blades are actually sharp. So this is Aruri's mm -hmm. room. So I would assume that could be the Queen's room, but it's obviously not by this. the fact the Queen's not there, or she's not in her room, is the other option. So she must be on the roof? If she's around. If she's not around, then oh, there you go. It's fine. We'll move on to somewhere else. Um, so we got more courtiers. We got more courtiers. Motes of light dart through the winding streams of water like schools of fish. Ah, there's Queen uh, Onikaza the second and two tigers. All right. Hello. You make a habit of turning up uninvited. The queen has affected a far more relaxed posture. A pair of tigers lounge indolently beside her seat. Kohopa, Tangaloa, welcome, our guest. He nods down to the cats. They fix you with attentive stares that cause many of the courtiers and attendants to gasp. Watch out. When these things lick, well, I hope for your sake you're not ticklish. You travel with a brave crew, Watcher. Onakaza smiles up at Edir. Um, good Kahopa, good Tangaloa. Nothing to fear, I say. If a queen cannot wrangle two cats, what right has she to the dead fire? She drags a hand over both their massive heads. They lean into the gesture. There are many leagues between here and Hasongo. I trust you have packed for the journey. She raises a quizzical brow. Um, I wanted to have a look around. Then look. Take in every delight within reason, but do not waste my time. He dismisses you with a casual wave, but you catch a trace of amusement in the gesture. The boldness of foreigners. She shakes her head and strokes the nape of a tiger's neck. Hello again. They tell me Hasongo is still cloaked in shadow. Uh, ooh, okay, where do we even start? You've been in my head since we first met. Ah, Akira. But listen how the Watcher flatters me. Onikaza chuckles to herself and shares a smile with the attendants in earshot. When her gaze swivels back to you, a presence like a storm cloud settles over your thoughts. I cannot plant a seed in untilled soil. Akira, I want for there to be trust between us. She raises her eyebrows to make sure you're paying attention. The trading companies send spies to every corner of the mountain. I say there are places they cannot go. Mass beneath a casual gesture of, of scratching her neck, Onikaza taps the side of her head. Um, If you can't feel at home in your palace, communication is the least of your concerns. You and Aruihi think alike. This is my oasis, I say, not my prison. But you did not climb all the way up the mountain to pay compliments, I say. You feel a light tug as the mental connection breaks for now. 
Onakaza settles back in her chair and nods to you, her eyes straying to her attendants only briefly. You keep interesting pets, Highness. Fine beasts, are they not? Gifts from the Wapua, a tribe of proud animal trainers. I named them Kohopa and Tangaloa, which makes the priests very unhappy. She grins to herself. Aruihi thinks I should feed my enemies to them alive and screaming. Ikira, I have given it thought. He pats Tangaloa on her head, not content to let the attention go astray. Kohopa shifts over until his ears are under the queen's fingers. Why do you put up with the trading companies? Because we are the shrub in the shadow of an old growth. Onakaza looks away and sighs through her nose. Even the gods may protest, but this city blooms from the wealth of foreigners. Aruihi would have me force them back to their ships. I say it is better to feed my allies under a single roof. I wish to discuss the Huana. We are the stewards of the dead fire. Our ancestors made this pact with the goddess Nagati long before Ukaizo, before the island vanished. She closes her eyes and bows her head. You mentioned a pact with Ngati. The one which taught us to shape water. A light, youthful smile overtakes her. It is said that Nagati bound her four guardians to protect the islands, the Adra, the seas, and the tribes. In return, she gifted them the forms of water shaping. For so long as our promise is kept, the goddess gives us dominion over water. Onikaza touches her brow with reverence. Did I do your mother justice, Takehu? <sighs> Akera. Somewhere in the abyss, she blinks her enormous eyes with approval, I say. Awfully cozy how the tribes get to use the endorsement of a goddess in a land dispute. Maya folds her arms and furrows her brow, a knowing smirk crossing her lips. If that is all you see, then Nagati's lesson is lost on you. Unikaza shakes her head. May I live to see Rawatai's conceit unravel them from within. Ooh. How long have the Huana been here? How long does coral grow? <laughs> Onakaza chuckles to herself. It is said the tribes assembled when Kohopa took his first mouthful of Amira's hatchling. And we will be here until the sea rises above our heads. That's my other questions. Speak on. A friend of the crown should be well informed, I say. Tell me about Nekitaka. Nekitaka is older than our memory. We found the great city in ruins, and the Kahanga have spent generations replacing every cracked stone. This is a Huana city, but the trading companies are both represented here. Hmm. Onikaza considers your reflection, nodding. The Valians were very forthright in their desire to carve out a permanent outpost, I say. When cannon shot echoed across the seas, the Crown opened negotiations with Rawatai's armada, a healthier alternative to war. My brother thinks I am too lenient with our visitors. I say I will accept even this uneasy balance. Who built Nekataka? The Huana, of course. The mark of our ancestors runs deep. Walls and districts are not how we would build a city today, but this place has echoes of the past. And our future, I say, if we can but reach to grasp it. Back to my other question. First, a question of my own. Excuse me? That's not allowed, but okay. Onakaza steeples her fingers and observes you closely. The city is not how the tribes would live. Walls stand between neighbors, and the beach is too far to walk comfortably. There are angles of the city I cannot see from my garden. What place has Nekataka in the great pattern of the dead fire? Hmm. How do we go for this? Let's say, I've seen what lies at the bottom. It isn't pretty, Highness. Bottoms seldom are, I say. Do we still speak of the city? I have lost track. Takehu winks. Onikaza only rolls her eyes. Everyone apart from a loth. Akira, my thanks for your perspective. I say you give me much to consider. Farewell. And on that, we're going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. Next time, we need to go speak with the leaders of the trading company. 
and tell the person in the gullet that we have provide got them a food source. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.